I was pregnant at the time of shooting that episode. I love that. So I did <laughs> not know knew. that. Yeah, Nobody no, knew. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. How, that's really too special. Early. So yeah. I was like nauseous. I know this is taking away from the sexy allure for the. For the <laughs> <laughs> My name is Anna Silk. For six seasons, I played Bo on the hit TV series Lost Girl. I am so happy you are here for the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast to take a trip down memory lane with me, the amazing cast, and some very special guests. I'm so glad to finally be able to say the family is back together again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast. We hope you are enjoying this as much as we are. I'm going to introduce my co-host for today. My co-host today is so beautiful that, frankly, I used to stare at her face when she wasn't looking. Uh, Her presence on the show had a ripple effect that you could feel even in episodes that she wasn't in. Please welcome the woman I called mom for six seasons, Inga Codronel. Yay! Hi! Hi, Inga. Hi, Anna. So good to see you. It's so good to see you. I love that we both have the same headphones and same... See, this is the this is our connection. It's the family, yeah, it's yes. the family. <laughs> um, it is so good to see you, and thank you so much for doing this for me mm-hmm. and for the fans of Lost Girl. Um, yeah. Doing this podcast is kind of a, a love letter to them, so it's a really great trip down memory lane for everybody. And mm-hmm. um, we've been having a lot of fun. I'm so, so excited. We are going to talk about season one, episode ten, which. In Canada, I know that the, the title of the episode was originally called Saskia, mm-hmm. which makes sense. I think I, I looked it up on IMDb and it's it's called different things in different parts of the world. But for our no. purposes, it was titled Saskia. It was mm-hmm. written by Michelle Lavretta and directed by Paul Fox. Um, and my first question for, for you and for both of us is how did you feel watching this episode? And what were your first impressions watching it? Oh my goodness. It was so cool to go back and watch this episode. Like, I don't actually think I've watched my work that I've done that long ago ever. So there's like a few things that stood out. I was like, wow, I feel like I'm so happy the the overplucked eyebrows are gone. (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) Tell me about it. (laughs) Tell me about it. What what was that? I know. I I, I I had the same thing. And I was like someone who grew up with really bushy eyebrows. So I always hated them. So I like really yeah. overplucked them. But I was like, oh my gosh. But that aside, it was really cool <laughs> to go back <laughs> and watch it. And I really liked it. Like, you know, sometimes you're nervous to see yourself younger because you feel like you grow as an actor and you get better and better and better. Totally. So I was like, am I going to suck? And, but the whole thing, I was like, this is good. This is like better than I even remember when I was doing it in the moment. Yeah. I, I feel like, the same way. So I mean, cool. I've, I, you know, I've been watching a lot of these episodes, obviously for, from this first season and it's been long enough that I don't remember what's going to happen next, but I was so excited watching this episode because it's a, first of all, it's just such an exciting episode. Yeah. Um, and it's such a really pivotal one for Bo because yeah. you come along mm-hmm. and just really like rock her world. Um, so yeah, I felt the same way and, um, it, it it was such an education for Bo, you know, but I got to tell you, Inga, you owned this episode. I mean, (laughs) I love your entrance, which is like basically down this like love tunnel (laughs) right in that nightclub, (laughs) which is the the perfect entrance. I know. Um, and you really like, it was, uh, it was a real, I remember just the feeling of like, keep trying to keep up with you in for real. And that would made it so perfect for Bo, right? Yeah. To just be like, she's this worldly, knows more uh, succubus, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it it really was that genuine feeling of of just trying to keep up. So um, that's so cool. That's so cool. I had such a great time on the show and everything. And I actually didn't really know what I was stepping into at the time. They hadn't told me at that time when I booked it, that I was your mom. Uh, Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. (laughs) Yeah. So I actually didn't know 
where this character was going. They just said very sexy, sensual. She's very sure, sure of herself. And I think, I can't remember who gave me the little whisper halfway through the episode of what was actually going on. I was like, no way. Like this is a whole other deal, which yeah. is, which is really cool to, to know that. And the other thing <laughs> when I watched it that I totally forgot about is I was pregnant at the time of shooting that episode. I love that. So I <laughs> did not know knew. that. Yeah, nobody no, knew. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. How, that's it was really too special. early. So yeah. I was like nauseous. I know this is taking away from the sexy allure for the, for the <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh no! Like I felt it was my first trimester. It was too early to tell anybody, so it was not like I wasn't feeling one hundred percent. But right. But anyways, I just, it was cool because obviously my daughter now, she's 11. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm seeing myself when I was pregnant with her. And it just was a really cool memory. I totally forgot yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Well, mm-hmm. you didn't look nauseous. I'll tell you that. But yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's a, that's a special memory for sure. And that's the kind of mm-hmm. stuff that that we can talk about on this podcast because that's the the stuff that fans want to know is any kind of behind the scenes stuff. And um, that's a very special one, obviously yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, I, uh, one thing I was going to mention, oh, my next question actually was, uh, best memory from this episode. Do you have anything oh. specific that you remember about filming? Best memory. Um, well, I'm Arnold Pinnock is one of my nearest and dearest friends. Oh my God. First so, of all, he was so amazing and so, amazing. so funny. Yeah. That's like, I think that was, we don't know sometimes who's getting, who's getting what part until you get your, um, your schedule in the morning or the day before you get something that's called, um, your call sheet. So then I saw Arnold's name on it and I was so excited when I got there. The two of us were like, "Eh." like, it was just so nice to be with someone who is a good friend and again, made me laugh the whole time. And I remember actually having trouble doing some of the stuff with him because in real life, I mean, on, on screen, he was like such a vile character, but in real life, he's so lovely and also just so funny. His like, just that sharp wit. Um, and I remember like in the dating speed dating scene, like Mm -hmm. when, when Saskia and Bo go, I just remember having a really hard time holding it together because he was so funny. It was, and it was so unexpected. You know, totally. Yeah, that's yeah. Arnold. He's such a crazy talent. Like he's amazing. So that was that was yeah. definitely a highlight. Yeah, I don't know. I guess my highlight was how kind everyone was. You never know what you're stepping into, and you right. guys were making this very new big show with a lot going on and a whole other, you know, this two world human and fey world thing. And and I'm like, I wonder how stressed out everyone's going to be by the time I get there. It's episode ten. So right. sometimes you can come at the end and people are like overworked, they're tired, you're just some guest. Uh, but everyone was so warm and lovely and welcoming, like right to the producers and Michelle and Vanessa Piazza, mm-hmm. like the like she gave me a ride home and her fancy sports car. And I was like, these people <laughs> are so kind. Like it was so... Oh, I'm glad it was that just you, a nice that experience. Yeah. And that makes yeah. me so happy to hear. And I think, yeah. you know, we knew on the show, we knew that we were doing something kind of special mm-hmm. that had a little bit of magic in it. And we, we, we just enjoyed it. So even by yeah. the end, we were, we were still going and so great. the characters that came on, like every guest star and then you coming in. I mean, every it, it was so rich. It was such rich storytelling. I mean, look at this episode. First of all, the the crime of the week element of it is so grisly, right? Yes. I mean, like women being shamed into killing themselves. I mean, like it's yeah. brutal, yeah. right? Um, yeah, and the visuals so of that are so dark. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally, totally. Like yeah. it, it, it was based in something real you know, and Mm -hmm. certainly didn't pull any punches. And I mean, that's what made Saskia's entrance into this episode so powerful too, because she's ruthless. Mm -hmm. Um, And Bo, I love how Bo and Saskia, 
each have such a strong sense of justice, but it's totally different, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, which it makes uh, sense when people find out that their mother and daughter, there is like a similarity yeah. in that in itself. A hundred percent. Like the passion for what they believe in. They're so like solid yeah. on that. Yeah. But their lived experience has been so different up until that point that she is ruthless. And mm-hmm. I mean, I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was dark. It was dark. Yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I had written here like that Saskia is the ultimate mean girl when it comes to like her, that whole intro in the bar and Kenzie getting jealous and all that stuff. But it goes way deeper than just being the mean girl. You know, well, that's the coolest part of it. Watching that first episode, thinking maybe this is a one off or like this is where that character will stay. Yeah. And knowing like where we ended up going and where what they revealed about her and and her mental health, like all of that. It's so cool. It was so well written and thought out. And it's fascinating to play something like that. Like you don't get an opportunity often to play a recurring that has that cool of an arc. Yeah. And that much nuance in it too, because like usually like, like you said, the character description, every character description, but for every woman is she's beautiful. She's tough. She's sexy. She's, you know, charismatic. she's she's charismatic. She, she has, is sure of herself, you know, um, (laughs) she's a genius or whatever, like everything that, um, <laughs> yeah. is like, you're like, okay, all right, let's be all those things. But this show kind of let you be all those things because mm-hmm. it was, it inspired performances that led to subtleties in those choices. And, you know, it's, um, yes, you're kick-ass. Yes. All those things are true, but it was not one dimensional. No, she um, ends up being from, so from the broken. moment. In. Yes, so broken. Yeah. So like broken. The most strong, exactly like confident, badass. And the fact that she's like desperately broken later yeah. on that we find out is just like, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, very it was a cool. gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So let me see what my next question for you, Inga. Okay. Was. Um, Oh, you know, one other thing that I loved about, about Saskia meeting Bo, I want to say too, is that you learned so much about the Fae world through a lot of Saskia's dialogue of, you know, her being so surprised that Bo, like you work. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know? I forgot all about that stuff. That was I know, so me too. Me too. Yeah. Cause it's, then it's like, it just gives Bo and the audience such a sense of like what a succubus can do and how they can sort of use their, their charms and all of those kinds of things. And I love the line of Fadar isn't really a succubus gift. Like that's just <laughs> yeah. like all these little tiny things that, that Bo gets yeah. to learn. So yeah. I really like those things too. Um, yeah. Most difficult or challenging part of filming this episode. Do you have anything that mm. came to mind? The most difficult, I don't know, maybe the stuff with, with um, uh, Lee rumor, you know, Lee, he's a friend of mine too. The guy we had in the alleyway. Oh, Yes. Because again, he's a friend of mine. Right. We play like, like he played hockey with my like then husband and stuff like, like kissing him and doing all that sexy stuff with Lee was was a bit hard for me because he had like, we had a very brother sister thing. Like he comes over to watch the Leaf games at my house and stuff. Right. Right. So that was kind of funny because like, I'm not really like that. Saskia person, like I'm much oh, no? more. <laughs> no, I know. I'm not a sex vixen. You know, I know people so think funny. that. I know. But like, I guess that was a little tricky. And also because I was learning, we talked about it during the filming, like the way that, um, I don't know what you guys called it, like sucking the chi or something. From yeah. Them. I mean, I always called it the succubus kiss, but that's what you're doing yeah. is your, yeah. And mine was like, I said, I was talking to them and I was like, I want hers. I think hers should be a little more aggressive. And yours was like sexy and lovely. And then mine was kind of like, like harsh. I loved (laughs) that. Yeah. And that was like a choice that they didn't, it didn't happen. Like we didn't pre-discuss it. It kind of happened. And then after we were like, they're like, oh yeah, this is, this is kind of a good thing for Saskia to be, to do it differently. Yeah. And I don't know, we were just figuring out the blocking with that alleyway and doing that. So I just remember that having a lot of stuff going on and I was very extra nauseous that day. And I oh, remember no. that that day being a little more like, okay, Inga, just like stay focused. You know, you get really dizzy and stuff too oh, when you're in your totally. first trimester. Yeah. So people are talking to you and you actually don't know like what they're saying. <laughs> I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. 
So yeah, Absolutely. that was kind of tricky. Um, otherwise, you would have think thought maybe the fight stuff with Arnold, but I thought that was so fun. That was actually that, like I remember that was really fun. There was um, like a cable thing, and there was, was a fun. cable thing. I mean that I was, that right? sequence of like I, I wrote down your lines where you're like bad news, Bert, because I'm pretty fucking shameless, and then you throw yeah. him. I literally yeah. like I was when I was rewatching it, I was like, oh my god. Because it, yeah, it was it was just cool. I mean, it was so it was badass. So cool. Yeah, that sequence was like I remember. It's just I remember that one being hard to film for me because, as it should have been, really, because it was hard for Bo. Like you know, they decide to unite, go after this guy. Saskia's sense of justice is different than Bo's. Mm-hmm. Bo is also, he's, he's put her under this little spell in the beginning. So she's got all these feelings of shame, which really plugs into her Bo's past, right? Because that's, I mean, that's all she was, was a bundle of shame by the time she comes to this Fae world. Um, yeah. yeah and you had a lot going on. There was a lot going scene. on. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. But I loved that whole, it, there was so much that happened in that scene beyond just us tying him up and and you killing him and you know totally. like that was um and i love how i loved that lingering shame for Bo into the rest of the episode and i love at the end her hugging kenzie because it she feels safe and at home again and then her looking and seeing your coat right like it's just yeah. so there was more to come for sure uh, and, and that more was to a discover very- that scene, you're right. Like, and I think back on it, there was so much revealed in, and not so much said, but yes. so much revealed. Like, even I remember trying to play Saskia like a little hurt when mm-hmm. Bo didn't want to, but not, but just play it off like that thing people do. You know, they're just like, whatever, like, you know, and, and, and it was like a, a first moment. That's, ha- that's, they had told me at that point who I was. And I remember okay. trying to play that dark, like uh, she had a moment of feeling uh, like let down and crushed, but trying to play it off. Like it was no big deal. And yeah, that it was really fun. And then there was all the action stuff we had to think about on top of that and the acting and yeah, there was a lot. lot And and there was also a little tiny piece of desperation in Saskia Mm -hmm. during that whole thing too, of desperation of like also wrestling with her, who she was. Right. You know, like I've always right. said for Bo that, you know, her whole arc for the whole series was her greatest source of shame became her greatest strength, you know, mm-hmm. like that was kind of, and that's just the beginning of where Bo was learning. Bo was learning about her powers in season one. She was learning how to control them. And then you come along. She's never met yeah. another succubus and you give her uh, stuff to look at that she's never considered, you know, yeah. but what I loved, I just, you had such power and sadness and desperation. And there was so much in there, Inga. I mean, we were so lucky mm. to have you. And I, I mean, I knew Aww. who you were before you were cast only because just from like audition rooms, like mm-hmm. seeing you being terrified of you, et cetera, <laughs> you know, all the things that <laughs> actors do. Um, and then when I found out you were coming on the show, I was like, wow, you know, and Chris knew you and I was mm-hmm. like, you know, what, what is she like? And he said, of course, said great things about you. And um, we were so lucky to, to do that for, for the whole series, you know? Yeah. Um, it yeah, was really, it was really cool. Very cool. Uh, it was, it was cool. I want to tell you an, another little tidbit that the fans will like that you might not know. Okay. Is that I auditioned for Bo. You did? Mm-hmm. I auditioned mm-hmm. for Bo and it was like, uh, they were talking to me about it and stuff uh-huh. a little bit, but, but yeah, isn't that funny? That is crazy. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm sure, I mean that, that I came into it way late. That's yeah. the only thing I know about my audition is I came in super late. Yeah. Um, like after they I was been not seeing people for a while. Top of mind. Yeah. Um, right. that is so funny. I know. That is it's so cool funny. That is fact, a, t- fun fact. that's a cool little fact. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, well, I, love yeah. That you I got remember to talking to, to John Fawcett about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like telling me all about the series he was going to do because I was working on another show with him at the time. Um, right. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's so funny about John Fawcett when we were working on season one of Lost Girl. All I remember him saying like, yeah, I'm developing this other show. It's about clones. And I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Went yeah, on I to be to that orphan black. Yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, he's a pretty, he's a pretty, uh, he's an incredible artist. I love John so yeah. much. And I Me know too. that I wouldn't have been on this show 
if it wasn't right. for him and Orphan Black. Like he's definitely one of those people that had championed me throughout yes. the, my career in Toronto. And mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you never forget those people. The gratitude no. I have for him is is a lot. So yeah, yeah that's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> um, okay. What do you think worked really well in this episode and maybe what didn't? Hmm. Good question. I think, I think all the, the club stuff really worked. I mm -hmm. loved the, how they shot it. I loved the way they folded it into meeting this like succubus who looks at this literally like a hunting ground the same way an animal would look at a forest. Yep. And I, I thought that was really cool. This is all stuff I'd forgotten until I rewatched it. And I totally. was like the concept of this and like the cleverness to how they made this series and folded it into the real world. Um, I love that kind of stuff. Like that, mm -hmm. that's, that's, I think fans dig that kind of stuff too. Like they're just like, this is really cool. So I thought that whole, um, that really, really worked for me watching it, trying to think of myself, not someone in it and just someone from the outside watching it. I thought that was mm -hmm. really badass. What didn't work? Um, oh gosh, I never really think of those kind of things. Um, I, uh, I don't know. What didn't work? I, I mean, I felt the episode was so strong. I, the only thing I put in the what didn't work was my braid. Yeah. <laughs> like my hair. I mean, it was, the, I mean, whatever. It's so, we'll go but like in, in watching it, you know, I just felt, I just remember being very concerned about my braid in that episode. Like I'd be like, <laughs> okay, let me put it over this shoulder. Yeah, that's, that's, and your that's hair better. Was no, wait, shorter, wait. Right? There. It was like up to no, here, right? Here. <laughs> yeah. Like it just was, it just, sure. it was, didn't feel like bow. Like it just didn't right. feel right. Whatever. Right. It's minor. It's, um, it's minor. But, but I remember like, my totally. first impression watching, I was like, oh yeah, that braid. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> um, what worked in here? I, I pr think I pretty much touched on a lot of the stuff that I thought was so good. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole three, threesome and all of that stuff, your badass dialogue. Um, yeah. yeah. I I just thought it was so interesting to look back and, you know, because I've watched some of the earlier episodes from this season, which was our first season. And it's so hard for me to watch because I was dying on the inside of, of nerves, you know, yeah. um, which in some ways had its own charms <laughs> when I look back. But I just really felt so out of my element. And I, I feel like by this time in the season, even though we mm. did shoot season one completely out of order, I don't remember when we shot episode 10, but I do mm. remember it wasn't like the second one we shot. Like it was later. Yeah. Um, it, I did have a better sense and rhythm and better sense of trust, I think, in just who everybody was, what we were doing. Um, you know, so by the time someone like you comes onto set, I was able to just really enjoy it more. And, yeah. um, so There's watching the episode, there was, there was a lot on my shoulders. I think I was a little bit blissfully unaware of that, <laughs> which yeah. is good. Uh, it be. wasn't, yeah, you kind of have to be, um, mm -hmm. cause it's certainly yeah. a machine that starts and you're just trying to, trying to, you go through a, a a phase where you're like, I'm on set, I'm leading the show to, okay, I'm a professional line learner sayer because that's how it yeah. feels. Like you're just like, blah, 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 you know, yeah. it, it's, and then you go, wait, I'm an actor. Like I gotta, right. you know, there's gotta be a story here. It's not just about spitting out these words and then running to the next set. Um, yes. So there was such a learning curve for me because uh, I'd never played a lead before of, of that mm -hmm. level and of that sort of demanding level. And yeah. um, it, it by the time you were on set, I had a little bit more more faith. So yeah, it, it definitely didn't show. By the time I got there, it felt yeah. already like everybody had had found their rhythm. Yeah, and but I know, like I've been on shows first season to whenever they're they're done. First season's always, you know, a really interesting season. It's the most exciting. It's yes. the scariest. It's the one people are trying to figure out who they are and who their character is. The whole totally. production is and set yes. that, 
you know, for the future. Yeah. Seeing people's strengths, playing to that, weaknesses, like fixing that. And like, writing to that. Like, you could start to, to feel that. that people were writing more to my strengths. I could start to feel that. Um, yeah. The other thing yeah. with season one is that we really had the formula of case of the week. You know, like mm-hmm. we had the, um, you know, procedural element of the show, yeah. which... I love procedurals personally. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people don't, but I do. I love them um, because they were they really built a story around those procedurals. Obviously, like look at that episode. It wasn't just about this, you know, Faye who makes people feel shame. It yeah. had more meaning, and it had meaning yes. for for Bo and for Saskia and for everybody. So, yeah. it, like um, anchored the episode. It it did, but like, mm-hmm. we, but we we very much were in the case of the week, and then it shifted into later seasons to be more serialized, um, yeah. and had bigger fights to fight, as we know. Because towards you the guys end. also, but that's like you guys showing them what was interesting was the relationships you guys all started to have together with each other, and the audience was probably lapping that up, and so yeah. they're like, this is this is what I think, you know, th- it's kudos for them to not be hard, steadfast. That's like, this is the formula we started with and this is what we're going to do. And that's always driven me crazy when shows and I'm on shows for multiple seasons. I'm like, you have to bend and move and flow to like what's happening. And they did. And that's why I think it was so beloved for so long. Yeah. Lose people. We didn't lose people. In fact, honestly, we've gained people. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know how many conventions you've done Inga for Lost Girl. I know that I Just think one. I was I think I was at that one with you. Uh, yeah, I don't remember in, which in London Atlanta? I did one. Oh, no. in London. I no, then I think I've, we've never there. done one. No, I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Um well, I'm sure you got a sense of the love of fans at that convention. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. cause I've done, I, I started doing conventions a bit later than the rest of the cast. I don't know why I I did, but I started a little bit later. But mm-hmm. I to this day, if I go to a convention, I meet people who are like, you know, 20 and they're like, I just started wow. watching this show. This oh, show wow. matters to me. This, you know, um, the, so the cool. relationship between Bo and Lauren, I see myself up there. It ma- like, it just it's matters to people. Of, it's ahead of its time. That was the other thing that stood out to me that I wanted to mention watching this episode 10 again, 11 years ago or something. Yeah. And how ahead of its time it was, what it was bringing to the screen and Bo having like, you know, a relationship with a man and a woman. And, and it just was so, it wasn't like, Ooh, this is what's happening. It was just like what it was life. And yeah. that kind of unspoken, this is life thing is what made, I think people connect and feel seen. And that was really impressive to me. That yeah, way back me when too. it was groundbreaking. Yeah, it was. And I feel like, you know, other shows that that started to do more of that, sometimes it would get into a bit of like, look at what we're doing, you know, yes. like this is the but it was never like that with, you know, there was the the in terms of the love triangle, there was Bo and Dyson and Bo and Lauren, but it was never like, mm-hmm. okay, now it's the Bo and Lauren part. Like everybody Let's yep. freak out they about this it, part. Yeah. yeah. The same as the, as, as the hetero relationship that they wrote yeah. that relationship the same. And it was, yeah, exactly what you're saying. Like an unspoken, you didn't have to hit it over the head or like, well, look, we're trying to make a statement. And, no. and that's what felt so lovely rewatching it. And to the point where I was like, Ooh, I'm going to tell my son's friends about this show. Like that's yeah. perfect now. They're older teens. And I was like, right. they're going to love this. Right. It mm. does have a bit of a timeless feel to it too. You know, one thing that, that dates it, uh, not dates it, I guess it does date it that I thought was mm. so funny when Bo and Kenzie come through that, I'm going to call it the love tunnel in the uh, nightclub mm. that you then come out of. Um, mm. When the photographer comes up and then Bo says yes. something like, you get a picture of yourself having fun while you're still having it. Wow. How cool. I, I mean, love that's, that. li- that's literally all we that's do now. now. I know. <laughs> I know. It's but like, again, they were like ahead of the time. Like they were totally. like talking about that. I was like, ah, that is so funny. I know. It's hilarious. You brought that up. I thought the like, same thing. Like that's all that Instagram is. It's like, well, yeah. look how much fun we're having. Let's take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, it's so yeah. weird, right? Yeah. It's so weird. And, the whole, yeah. and, and Kenzie makes some kind of comment about chasing fame, which is mm. so like, my kids now, they're, they're, I have two boys, I th- as you know, and they're six and nine. And they're really starting to talk about like wanting to be famous. And, and their connection to that is the idea of going on YouTube, yeah. you know, like that's what, and of course I'm like, oh, geez, you know, like, I, I don't know about this, but then I think like, you know, 
I wanted to be famous when I was a kid. I wanted to be a movie star. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the same thing. The, it's the same feeling for sure. We just have to be careful because the playground out there now for them to be famous in is not as safe because it no. reaches to so many it's, people. There's so much happening. Yeah. 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 We just have to like every moment, you know, we have to kind of see what they're doing and what they're I into. Know. I just know. making sure it's all safe because it's not regulated enough, but I know. Yeah. Definitely different than what um, we had. I have one final question here. Uh, any behind the scenes memories or secrets from filming this episode that fans might like to hear? I mean, I think you've shared that. I think I, sh- <laughs> I think you I shared saved that. The, I was pregnant the whole time. I know. And I then, know. But that's it, yeah. I was pregnant for that, and then pregnant still for the other episodes. Yes. And then when I came back for the last ones, I think I'd had the baby already. Yeah. Yeah. I did because it was like oh yeah. A, for sure. But yeah, I don't, what, behind the scenes, I was friends already with Chris Holden Reed, like I said, and Arnold yeah. and Lee. Like these were all my homies that I already knew. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. Vanessa would drive me home in her cool sports car, the producer. Yeah, totally that's a behind it. the scenes thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not this episode, but there was like a later episode where I was still pregnant. <laughs> And, and I think I was like seducing Dyson and I was like supposed to hop up on a desk and like hike up my skirt. <laughs> oh yeah. But I was so pregnant and, and, and like feeling so like self-conscious of like my body and all this right, stuff that right. they, they had to build like a special skirt <laughs> that didn't actually hike. Cause I was like, no, I don't want to show my legs. I don't want to talk. I'm swollen. This is awful. And so they like built me this, that was like an accordion material in the back that would kind of like open up so open. I could like jump on the desk <laughs> and then like close as I stood. And I remember feeling so grateful that they did that just for like yeah. a recurring guest. It wasn't like I was some reg on it. Like I thought that was so cool. And I, I, I mean, they took care of you, which is yes. so nice to hear, you yeah, know, yeah. cause that does not vulnerable. always happen. At all. No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. no you're kind no, of made to feel like a bit of a nuisance if you're, if yeah. you're asking for certain things or needing certain things. But I, I mean, I always felt so taken care of. Um, yeah. And uh, so I'm glad lovely. to hear that you were as well. Yes, um, I, I, behind the scenes in terms of filming a couple of things, I was going to tell the fans because I feel like fans like to know certain things. Um, Lee, the actor, when we were filming with him in the nightclub and dancing, first of all, whenever mm-hmm. I have to, this is like Bo starts dancing or any, I just can't stand it. Like, like, ah. like, I feel like such a dork, but <laughs> doing my sexy dancing, all that mm-hmm. sequence was actually on location in a nightclub. Yeah. Right. I can't remember where, somewhere downtown mm-hmm. Toronto. And yeah. then when we throw him out into the alley, that was all in studio. So that yeah. was two totally different days. Um, yeah. And I just think that's always kind of cool for people to hear. And yeah, the other sure. behind the scenes, the opening sequence of, I love, uh, you know, Bo and Kenzie polishing their weapons and drinking wine yeah. and throwing the knives. And what was so funny about filming that, of course, is that we're not hitting that that mannequin. It's like, I mean, it's just not happening. Thing. So like crew has to clear because we're really throwing the knives. Um, so we don't, kill them. Uh, mm-hmm. And Ksenia and I are whipping the knives as we're trying to look cool and have this conversation. But what's really happening is they're going like, clang, clang, ding, ding, dong, dong. You know, like they're just like, <laughs> it's not cool. And they're it's probably noisy. They're catching and, them in blankets and, and stuff. Um, in blankets, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it was just, mm-hmm. it's just really funny to film those things because from one side, it looks so cool. And we're trying not to laugh because yeah. it's, we're not hitting those. So a, a knife yeah. throwing expert came in to film all the stuff where, <laughs> where those <laughs> blades landed. Um, yeah. I developed we're many skills cool over filming, seen. but not that skill. Yeah. Um, but no, anyway, Inga, good. it's so lovely to see you. Lovely to um, see you too, It Anna. was honestly to have you on a show that I was on was a total dream mm-hmm. for me. And to play your daughter, I mean, I I will, that's the greatest compliment of my life. I mean, (laughs) it really is. Uh, It really was. And, and you were such a fan favorite and you brought so much, so much to the show. And I'm super grateful to you for that. And grateful to you for being on this podcast with me, because this is, this is such a beautiful thing to do for the fans. And thank you. Yeah. Well, Lost Girl was definitely a highlight for me. So thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening today. What a treat to have Inga here with us. And we'll see you on the next one. Hello, 
everybody. Welcome to today's Spotlight. Before an actor sets foot on set for day one of filming, there are wardrobe fittings, hair makeup tests, camera tests, and script script read-throughs. Having been cast in an action-packed show, I also found myself standing in a very unique gym space filled with lots of padding, wires hanging from the ceiling, and pretend weapons in every corner. Standing opposite me on a warm-up mat was today's spotlight. One of the fittest women I have ever seen. She had been introduced to me as the best in the business. She was certainly this and so much more. Please welcome the unstoppable Jen Vey. Yay. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> How That's are a you? phenomenal welcome. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're a, a phenomenal lady. So Thank um, you. it's so exciting to have you here, Jen. And yes, everyone watching, because I know some of you are just listening, but if you are watching on the YouTube channel, you can see that Jen has very blonde hair and I have very dark <laughs> hair. But yes, Jen was my stunt double on Lost Girl um, and a phenomenal stunt double. <laughs> But uh, I don't know if you remember, Jen, that day that I'm describing on the warm-up mat, that first day, I remember so clearly standing opposite you. It's the first time I'd met you and yeah. we were doing stretches and I remember stretching yeah. my neck and you were like, you can go a little further. And I was like, mm, no, like, actually no, I can't. can't. <laughs> <laughs> and that was I Jen's <laughs> like first like assessment of like, oh, okay, all right. Yep. She's okay. like, right. bend like that. But, um, <laughs> and that kind of leads me to my first question because, you know, being a stunt performer is so much more than just doing action you know? So I'm wondering if you can explain to the fans listening what it actually means to double an actress on set. Sure. Well, it's a, it's a long process to arrive in that position. Uh, So like an actress who lands an awesome job of Bo in Lost Girl, there's a lot of prep work behind the scenes to, to land in that uh, type of role. So same with me, but every stunt person seems to have their own uh, entry into the film industry. And for me, I um, was an athlete my whole life. Um, Didn't really attend many parties or my high school prom or any of those things growing up because I was a diver and uh, training a couple times a day and found myself um, near the end of my diving career on the Canadian national team. So that was um, my background. And when it came time to uh, hang up my swimsuit, I remember my father saying, well, you know, what are you going to do now? Like, you have to find something to fill your time. And I'd shared that I'd started to do a few commercials and was doing some print uh, advertising as a diver, and that it was um, leading me into this film industry. And he said, well, you know, how often are you going to be able to dive on camera? Like, during the Olympics for ad campaigns, great. But after that, and then a year or two later, uh, I managed to, to... kind of prove my dad wrong. Well, dad, you know, this is what I'm doing, working every day on film sets, doing stunts. And so I just made connections with the right people um, in our union. And uh, just, uh, it's all about networking, but also like having something, a skill set or a niche skill set to bring to kind of fill a need. And at the time, um, there didn't seem to be many girls who were capable of doing like aerial acrobatics and wire work and uh, high falls. Mm -hmm. And being a diver, that's what naturally um, was more simple for me. It was like another day at the pool. So I got brought into the industry to do those sorts of things. And then it spiraled into martial arts and gun handling and all the kinds of crazy stuff I did for you over the years. I know. And uh so that's that's kind of my background was uh, everyone comes into it with some sort of athletic background yeah. and a desire to continue performing. I was doing a live stunt shows at a at an amusement park here in Canada. And uh just one thing led to another and this job with you was was uh one of many jobs in film where I get to use the skills I worked my whole youth to to develop. So yeah. that's how I got there. <laughs> and the other thing that's so interesting too about, you know, doubling an actress on a show is that, cause I'm sure everyone watching and we've all seen shows where you can so clearly see when the stunt person is doing something, <laughs> you Sometimes. know, it's so clear because they're suddenly mm-hmm. moving so differently um, yes. than the actress. And one of the things that I learned from you, Jen, and didn't really consider before this was that you really watched me and you really mm-hmm. watched how I moved. And so that when it came time for you to do the stunt, 
it, it looked like me because sure. you were kind of, and that's, that's the kind of nuance that a really good stunt person has to pick up on because you could come in and do an awesome kick, but if it doesn't look like it's me, then you've kind of not done your job, you know? Yes. Um, and that's what's it's so subtle. interesting. It's subtle. And that's what you were so skilled at, uh, Thank you. among many things, but that was something I really, <laughs> w- really noticed you observing me and then going in and doing it. And Jen made things look very easy, everybody, but it mm. wasn't easy. And the other thing about, you know, what I noticed about stunt performers and you in particular is that you, you know, you work so hard for the tiny moment you get on set and they don't often give a lot of time for stunts. You know, you come mm-hmm. in and they call action and the stunt team takes over and then that's kind of it. Like it's yeah. done. So you have to really shine when you need to shine. Um, yes. And that's the other thing you were so wonderful at. And I was Thank very you. much in awe of watching Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in, in line with what you're saying there, and that's kind of maybe one part I left out in, in my previous response is that it is very much a melding of two um body movements and two types of different characteristics, maybe with how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember learning that very on in my career, I had to do a simple scene where I had to run for an actress who had very high heels on. And it was just, she had a bad ankle, it was high risk for her. So I just came out for the day to run in these like super high, awesome stiletto heels. But I remember being told, I was running a little bit too much like, you know, a sprinter, a track star, like a you know, like a Lyndall Hamilton and a Terminator (laughs) kind of, right? And that I had to just tone it down, be less athletic. And so that's when I realized I'm not supposed to just go all out how I would normally sprint if someone like said, go, I have to really truly make it look like um, this actress. And so with you, yes, it was like, how do you move? How do you swing your sword? Um, Are you right-handed or left-handed? Always as a stunt performer, we also have to be mindful to not play to the camera the same way way you do. I have to hide my face. I had a nice big brown wig to help me do that. (laughs) But you often had your hair tied back and that half up kind of look. So it also sometimes made it trickier, but um, just, you know, to be creative and aware in that regard. But then to show up on set and like you said, be ready when they say, okay, you know, time for the stunt, let's move on. Um, You know, you have to be like prepared, Um, not just like with the physical skills, but for your body to all of a sudden just go. So yeah. just having, and you don't I know guess, when, right? Like it's like yeah. you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for hours and hours and hours in the cold <laughs> and the heat, yeah. whatever now it fight. is. <laughs> now fight and do it <laughs> like one time and do it really well. And, um, yeah. that's what makes it, it looks easy to the untrained eye. I think that you just come in and True. do it and you're done. But the yeah. skill that it takes to get there is something I came to really appreciate from working with mm-hmm. you and watching you. And Jen and I also spent a lot of time together, everyone listening, because um, Jen would train me in, on the weekends usually. We would yeah. work out together and just kind of get to know each other. And um, she got to know my body and what it c- could and couldn't do and mm-hmm. um, became very good friends. So I felt very it fortunate. Was amazing. But I felt very taken care of on set with you. Um, because you Thank really you. would show up for me in not just the stunt girl who's there to, you know, double me, but like a, a friend and an ally and um, just someone who really took care of of my body and me. Thank you. And I, I, <laughs> I felt very fortunate to have all those experiences with you. Um, Thank you. Likewise. What are, oh, thank you. <laughs> what are mm-hmm. some of your best memories from working on Lost Girl? Hmm. Okay. So I was thinking about this before uh, jumping on with you today and there's so many and I'm like, how do I describe that? Cause I don't remember what that creature was called that we were fighting or, you know, so I'm going to try to see if the audience remembers some of these moments and I'm not sure if they're all from season one, which we're, you know, most focused it's on a, right now. But yeah. um, I think just the, the sheer fact that we could come out and no matter what situation, whether we're fighting some swamp monster or we're in a gladiator ring or we're sword fighting, you and I could just work together um, in just a really cohesive and prepared way to just knock it out of the park mm-hmm. and just be there to support each other on days when it was a little more grueling or difficult for one of us or the other. Mm-hmm. And just to like seamlessly let it happen. Um you know, with preparedness and everything we would do behind the scenes. So I think just like that multitude of just different environments that we would do our thing in was amazing. Yeah. But most importantly, when you just mentioned, you know, about the training outside of 
the show, like just coming to your place and working one on one. I got it actually a, a physical shiver, like I got a shiver because it's like every time I still drive past um, where you were staying in the city, I'm just like, oh, this is where we'd run. And, you know, yeah. it was just um, amazing establishing that friendship with you and to have that uh, relationship outside of uh, the set. And then I um, hope it's okay to mention, but like, uh, for the audience uh, who doesn't know this about me, I uh, had a baby in between, I think it was maybe season two and season three, or maybe season one and two, I can't remember. It all seems to blend together because we were together for so many years. But Anna got to kind of watch me be a set mom and have my baby in the trailer that I would go back to, to nurse in between uh, scenes and, yes. you know, or to have to go pump my breast milk because yeah. I was going to start to bust out of the clothing and that's not <laughs> yeah. going to match Bo. Like that's yeah. not, you know, we got to deal with that. Um, and so like for Anna to watch that and then the following season for you to be in that exact same situation and Absolutely. the whole crew to be warmed up to it because I had kind of put that under their yeah. noses and then, you know, for you to have that support, obviously, which you would have anyways, but then to kind of go through that whole process together and to train you while you were pregnant Yes. So that whole side of things is like so unique that I could double you as you were coming back from being pregnant. And none of us women are the most like confident about ourselves after we've had a baby, our bodies changed. Mm-hmm. Um, and the strength and to go through goes, that together. too, right? Like yes. it's, I remember yes. uh, that you had had your second child. It was your second child yeah. that you had then, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, to be a double, uh, for everyone listening, you kind of, you have to match the actress. Like you're, you, you've got to be roughly the same height, obviously, and weight roughly and the same kind of build. body shape, body yeah. shape. Exactly. So I remember Jen, you being concerned about that. <laughs> I remember like you <laughs> was getting on the weight. phone and being like, you know, you're like, okay. Cause you know, pressure to lose weight as a woman is, is high anyway, as particularly in our industry. But for Jen, it was like so much more <laughs> because you had to come back to work and match me. Um, yeah. But I will tell you guys, when she revealed her weight to me, it was already less than I was at the <laughs> I was time. So, so I was, I was so like, okay, you can like... stop, Jen. Like, get off the treadmill. You're good. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're already like, less okay, than don't me. Don't worry. Yeah. That was like um, the best day ever. I was yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Because I eat a dessert like every day. And I think maybe, you know, leading up until this conversation, I might have been, you know, depriving myself. Right. And then I'm like, well, bring on the dessert. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was a very unique uh, bond that we had. Um, yeah. And, and to be able girl, to advocate. Yeah. Like I was just going to say to be able to advocate for you when you're like, I can do it, I can do it. Or, yeah. you know, or even when you were first pregnant and, and there's certain things you were being asked to do, but we kind of, yeah. you know, were aware of what you're trying to protect and um, yeah. just to be able to advocate for you discreetly a little or for you to, you know, be able to come to me and say like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this. And then I could say, actually, yeah, you are you know, yeah. believe in yourself, go do it. Or, you know, what, I'll take this one. Like just to kind of have that little connection totally inside the bigger circle of folks with all their goals and processes. And yeah, yeah it was just awesome yeah, in that way. So awesome. And I Thank think, you. um, you know, I, I think it just, this makes me think of, you know, a lot of people think of Bo as like this kick-ass woman character and she certainly was, but like she was yeah. this, is actually what a kick-ass woman looks like in real life is <laughs> Jen Bay <laughs> because, um, you. you know, she, you, you, she, you knew how mm-hmm. to protect yourself. You knew how to protect your body, mm-hmm. knew how to take care of your body. And that's like to take, we have to take care of ourselves on set because it is such a marathon and it's like, it's kind of harsh a harsh environment. It's a hard, hard, hard environment. If you mm-hmm. are not resting when you need to rest and if you're not fueling yourself with good mm-hmm. food, which is hard to do when you're really tired, um, then you yeah. really uh, suffer and you can't show up and be kick ass. And that's true. what you just, you always took such excellent care as you still do of yourself. Um, Thank you. It was you who got me into yoga. So, you know, <laughs> know. Jen would always be like, I don't know about ways. yoga. And then you try yeah. and you're like, whoa, it's actually kind of hard. Yeah, I love yoga. <laughs> um, yeah, good. Um, what, I think we kind of touched on this, but what were some of the, what are some of the biggest challenges of being a stunt performer in general, and what were there any specific to Lost Girl? Uh, so biggest challenges is, um, you know, there, there's a couple. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they're not major, they're not, you know, career changing deal breakers, but you know, one of the main things is just to always maintain tip top shape because as a stunt performer, you don't really know what your next job is going to be and what you're going to be asked to do. So if I have on my resume that I can do a backflip, uh, I still better be able to do a backflip or I've got to take that off my resume. So just being able to stay like um, current with what I've put myself out there to be able to do. Mm-hmm. So just keeping like an ultimate level of fitness um, sometimes is not easy when it's the holidays and everyone's not going to the gym. And I'm certainly not obsessive about it. I have a good enough base where I can ride out these moments, but that that's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the biggest challenge is always wanting to please to be able to give the producers, the executives um, exactly what they want. And what they want from a stunt performer is to be able to showcase risk in a safe way. But unfortunately, sometimes different productions, it may not be the ideal with regard to safety. And so to have to advocate for myself to say that this may not be the safest way to do it, but we could still achieve the same uh, vision an outcome by doing it slightly different, there's a risk because, you know, like a lot of industries, we're all fairly replaceable. And so just trying to balance pleasing production with high risk performance, the executives with keeping myself safe and having longevity in this space, in this industry. And I definitely Um, witnessed some, you know, younger or like newer stunt people sometimes, I think taking some risks here and there mm-hmm. that I think it's very new uh, like or sorry it's it's common when you're new you pay your dues you, you show your honestly worth it's common with acting here. too you take role yeah. a role that maybe doesn't showcase you in the way you'd really want to be showcased but you mm-hmm. do it anyway because you're starting you out your you resume. want a job yeah. you, you know um it's so interesting um Jen yeah. thank you so much for joining you're welcome us today I know people that's are gonna all. love that I, <laughs> I know I know we'll come back and do this it's, again it's gonna be really cool <laughs> for people to see um see you and and hear from you thank because, you uh and yeah I I feel like I'm very uh I'm very touched today that you're here because oh. I think I, I it's not that I have forgotten it's just that seeing you and talking to you I remember how special our bond was and yeah. um and is and still is. And, uh, and you know, can I share something with your audience super sure, quick? Sure. So, so Anna's here tooting my horn. So now guys, you know, for me to share with you, I remember when I first started working with Anna and everybody would say like, how's the new lead on your new show? Everyone wants to know, like, what's the person like you're going to be working so close with over the next however many years. And I remember always saying to everyone, she's the most grounded down to earth actress I've ever worked with. Nice and caring and considerate and empathetic. And you um, you know, you're, you're like a, finding a needle in a haystack. There's not many like you. So I just wanted to share that with the audience that, you know, oh, Anna, you're, you're, me. thank you. So yeah. Much. You're not like, like most. So anyway, <laughs> well, you I made it a very that. pleasant experience. You're welcome. Good. And that's all. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. That means a lot to me. And thank you everybody for listening today to today's incredible spotlight. Um, you don't really shine much brighter than Jen Bay. So uh, oh. thank you very much. And we will see thank you everybody. very soon. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast, which is produced by Anna Silk, Rachel Scarston, and Seth Cooperman with theme music by our very own Blood King, Rick Howland. Please rate, review, and share the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast. This enables us to grow and to continue bringing you exciting new content every week. If you don't already, follow us on Instagram and on our YouTube channel at Lost Girl Rewatch. You can also subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus episodes made just for you and get early access to all of our episodes. with you okay oh god i'm gonna do this with you inga Mm -hmm. with our glasses on because time has passed (laughs) you and i Mm -hmm. are going to engage in a camera succubus kiss okay (laughs) are you ready for this i'm gonna look at my camera okay we're gonna camera and we're gonna give our best 
Succubus Kiss. For those listening, you'll have to go to the YouTube channel to see it. But you know, you'll probably hear some some breathiness. And uh, okay, ready? On three. (laughs) Three. I can't believe I'm doing this. Three, (laughs) two, one. Did it work? I don't know. You're going to have to ask someone else watch We're it. We're going <laughs> to... We'll have to put in the VFX. Oh my gosh. Um, that's about as ridiculous as, as it always felt filming it, frankly. 